Lately, the internet's been swarming with questions regarding today's youngest generation. Is Gen Alpha doomed? And their in-class behavior. I've had a student throw chairs at me and shoes because I asked them to get their math book out, but they didn't want to. That's right. Gen Alpha, along with their older cohort, Gen Z, aren't currently on the best of terms with the education system. Bro, imagine going to school, bro. I mean, I went for a few years, but like, that shit was trash. And from severe learning gaps. These kids, they can't even answer questions about themselves. When I tell you that these babies cannot read, they cannot write, and they cannot comprehend, I'm not being funny. I'm being dead serious. To a dangerous lack of discipline. What? What's gonna happen? I've had enough of this. This punishment stuff is going to stop. You're not gonna tell me what I'm gonna do and not do? I am now the alpha. Educators are now exiting the profession at a staggering rate. But who is to blame? Teachers? What's me teach English grammar to students with Subway Surfers gameplay in the background? Parents? If you are not ready to admit that there's a problem here, we cannot get anywhere near even talking about the solutions. Or something else. A student today accidentally called me Alexa. First, we need to understand how we got this far. Generations, a group of people that come to define an era in time, such as the post-war baby boom or the rise of the millennium. As it stood, Gen Z was the youngest demographic born after 1997. Zalfas, though highly debated, stand somewhere between 2009 and 2010 babies. Then came Gen Alpha, a group of tykes born after 2012. And like all new generations, they mark a shift. The young are now old. What are your thoughts on millennials? I mean, it's pretty fire. I wish I could go back and meet some of my ancestors. The trendy now played out. If you have a pop socket on the back of your phone, you should take it off and throw it away or burn it because pop sockets are the skinny jeans of phone accessories. And the slang, now incomprehensible compared to the groovies and sleigh of yesteryear. What is a yacht? So what? What on earth I'm is sorry, a what? And likely for good reason. It stands for, um, it stands for girl, your... your booty thick. <laughs> but as we struggle to understand the rituals and practices of these tiny, seemingly alien life forms. Mad lit on God. Mad lit on God, on God, no cap. Now we know that Riz is Gen Z for someone who has charisma. Charisma. The Rizzler is the, is the standard bearer of Riz. It's the, yeah. it's yeah. the most charismatic person that you know. Gen Alpha and in turn, some of Gen Z, have been struggling to meet the expectations so easily succeeded by previous generations. Oh my God, your year starts with 19, you're so old. Spell necessary. Uh Shut up. Yep, according to the current and former educators sounding the alarm bells across social media, the kids most definitely are not all right. In fact, it seems the very fundamentals of learning that were once so easily molded into elastic young minds just aren't sticking for these days. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny, but these kids are... I'ma just say this. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. And from reading comprehension... I could ask them, who is the main character of your story? The story of the four-paragraph story we just read. Can't tell you. They don't know. They don't know. It took us four weeks, four weeks to get through how to answer a question in a complete sentence. To basic information. Like I just had a session today where I asked a student like what their date of birth was. The student had no idea when their birthday was, did not know what year they were born. What used to be considered common knowledge for students isn't so automatic for kids and teens today. The first thing that really shocked me was the fact that I had to tell so many students to write their name on their paper. Like, and then when they did, they would only write their first name. No last name, no date, no period. They were in none of that. But whether you're from Gen X, Y, Z, or A, one thing that should be common knowledge among all of us is that region-locked shows on streaming services are annoying. 
If you've ever been told that Friends is on Netflix only to search for it and come up with nothing but a suggestion to watch Seinfeld instead, you're not being lied to. Friends is on Netflix, just not your Netflix. But don't worry, all you have to do is sign up with our friends at today's sponsor, Surfshark. And with the click of a button, you're browsing Netflix from Britain and have access to every single one of the episodes of Friends, from the one where it all began to the last one. And remember when Netflix allegedly got rid of The Office a few years back? Well, that's just what they wanted you to think. Meanwhile, it's been keeping calm and carrying on over the British Netflix this whole time. But if for some reason you wanted to subject yourself to the British version of The Office, which is essentially just the so cringe it's almost hard to watch first season of The American Office, but for a whole TV show, you'll ironically have to leave the UK and come over and join us here in Canada, where we have the CBC Gem streaming service only available to people in Canada, unless you're using Surfshark which allows you to instantly switch between servers in over 100 countries. And regardless which country you choose to browse from, Surfshark's encrypted VPN tunnel allows you to browse the web anonymously. Your internet provider will only see that you're accessing Surfshark servers, and the website you're visiting will only see that you're an unidentifiable Surfshark user. So, if you're looking to enjoy the internet without the drama, Surfshark is an amazing option. And if you click the link in the description and use promo code SPILLTY, you can get three extra months free, while also being a key part of our journey, assisting our channel in creating more of your favorite content. Now, let's get back to the big issue. This brings us to the first subject of who is to blame, the teachers. Are they just as responsible as their students for their ignorance? Well, according to educators themselves, no, they aren't. After all, they're just working with what they're given which currently happens to be student bodies with years of accumulated gaps in knowledge. And while teachers have adapted to their students' skill sets by lowering their expectations and adjusting their assignments. We are absolutely still writing essays or, or trying to. It's just heavily modified because they can't do it. There's no simple fix to this problem or the vicious cycle it's created. See. Educators might spend an entire school year addressing the gaps in their classroom from previous years, only for the school system to allow these children to advance to the next grade, despite being completely unprepared. They just keep passing them on, 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 passing them on. I can put as many zeros in this grade book as I want to. They're gonna move that child to the eighth grade next year. And the biggest hurdle teachers are now facing? Well, that would be the seemingly growing number of students that can't read. Y'all, the literacy rates right now are insane. Kids aren't reading. They're not recognizing letters. They're not recognizing letter sounds. This is gonna go much deeper than we think it's going to go. And she's right. When it comes to reading issues, well, it turns out having to wait for the movie is just the tip of the iceberg. That's because illiteracy is the gateway to a host of other problems, including further cognitive issues, a heightened risk of dropping out of school, and criminal activity, according to a 2012 report in the U.S. Department of Justice. But when it comes to the supposed reading struggles of today's students, perhaps this isn't a problem with teachers. Enter the second subject of who is to blame, the school curriculum. See, for decades, various schools across the American education system have been working with theories for teaching reading that have already been debunked by cognitive scientists. One of these theories is the three cueing system, which involves students using context clues when they come across an unfamiliar word, like the drawing it might appear under in a book. What makes you good readers? Because I look at the pictures and I read it. Another approach is the whole word system, which relies on repeatedly exposing children to words until they know them by memory. From what I can see from my classrooms and my experience with my band kids is that they are learning words by sight. They're learning and memorizing what those words look like. And this works until they come across words that they haven't seen before. Adagio, not a super long word, 
not a really complicated combination of letters, but because the child had never seen that word before in their life, they had no concept of what it looked like. They could not have it memorized in their banks already. And so when they would try to reproduce it and they could not phonetically spell it out or they could not reproduce those letters in the correct order by any measure of degree of accuracy, they were literally making up shapes. Um, or making up words, or making up symbols, or writing symbols that weren't even letters. During this time, tried and tested systems like phonics, aka good old fashioned sounding words, fell to the wayside. Now we have over 50 years of research, including a panel conducted by the US Congress in 1999 that has proven that phonics is absolutely necessary to literacy learning. Recently, American school boards have begun embracing phonics again. However, the after effects of the three queuing and whole word systems are hard to dispute, as students that were guided using these theories might be able to read, but often not very well. In fact, in 2023, it was reported that U.S. reading and math scores amongst 13 year olds had dropped to their lowest levels since the 1970s. But then again, a curriculum can only account for so much, and when it comes to the root cause for the extent of Gen Alpha and Gen Z struggles, well, according to educators, the call is coming from inside the house. Which brings us to the third subject of who is to blame, the parents. For an attendance question the other day, I asked my students, what's one thing you believed as a child for far too long? Kid one goes, that my parents loved and cared for me. Why don't y'all know? that y'all kids not performing on a grade level. Why y'all don't know this? Honestly, we have sat down in meetings where parents are crying and who is to blame for this? Where are these kids getting this from? <laughs> we gotta do something. And I love y'all, but it can't only be the teachers doing it. Yes, as the feedback from teachers suggest, Gen Alpha's and Gen Z's aversions to education isn't innate, it's learned. I'm talking to parents, if you are not ready to to admit that there is a problem here we cannot get anywhere near even talking about the solutions the assumption goes as follows parents who are working long hours to make ends meet in an inhospitable economy have let screen time make up for their lack of presence in their children's lives as for the cost of this limitless access to technology well, it hasn't exactly set the youth up for success. These iPad kids getting out of control. <laughs> what? What's gonna happen? Excessive electronic use by these so-called iPad kids has altered their development, stunting their social skills and academic performance according to studies. Instead, unrestricted time online has created students that can't operate professionally in a classroom environment. Miss Chella, you've been working on your mewing? Mm -hmm. What? Your mewing? The problem that I have with mewing in the classroom and at school is that kids are using it as a way to be disrespectful to their teachers without their teachers understanding what it is they're doing. And to the fascination, dismay, and horror of older generations seem disconnected from IRL learning. A student today accidentally called me Alexa. After all, According to teachers, it's not that these kids aren't capable, it's that they don't care to be. They don't care. You know, they have their phones, it fixes things for them. Everybody around them is in the same spot, so they don't understand how behind they are. If everybody around you is sucking ass, you don't know that you're sucking ass. And it turns out academics, well, they just don't provide the same dopamine rush as watching a six second video, hitting a like button, or getting a follow back. And while teachers have done their best to capture their students' low attention spans through some innovative approaches. One, two, three, eyes on me. Thank you. Look at me, look at me. You look at Sometimes I do like memes on my slides to like get their attention. Even using a popular TikTok tactic that people have dubbed as overstimulation videos or sludge content targeted towards those with dopamine receptors burnt to a crisp. What's me teaching English grammar to students with Subway Surfers gameplay in the background? Today, the students weren't on their phones, distracted. They were listening to me and watching the screen. 
We tried Minecraft Pogo and slime making videos, but Subway Surfers came out on top. Other educators seem to have lost hope. It's going to get worse, isn't it? An alleged teacher recently asked in a now viral post on the teacher's subreddit. Expanding on the reasons for their pessimism, they explained they teach 9 to 12 ELA, and despite allowing students to boost their grades with revisions, offering open book tests, and even explicitly telling them what's important to write down, the kids have no interest in their education. I became a teacher to help build resiliency in our kids and show them how to be problem solvers and assets to our community at large, the user wrote. But between the apathy, the lack of structure at home, and the I'm gonna be my child's best friend play, it becomes extra challenging. Almost every kid tells me they don't go to bed until 1 a.m., but that they're in bed by nine, and more than half show up in their pajamas, wrapped in fleece blankets, clutching their Starbucks Stanley, but leaving everything but their uncharged laptops at home. Is this going to be our new normal? Naturally, testimonies from educators like this have sparked concern online about parenting. The teacher said the one thing that all the kids have in common is that they don't care. If this is true, is this not the biggest problem we're facing as a culture? Our kids don't care about life. Should we not stop everything we're doing and figure out how to take better care of our kids? But apathy is one issue. Disrespect is another. Having to teach and work with you guys as children has been the most traumatic experience of my life. Yes. Another drawback of limitless screen time, kids that can't regulate their emotions, and paired with parents who seemingly don't see the issue. Well, it's a dynamic the internet can't help speculating on. Here's what I think. I think the millennials raising this generation who were raised by boomers and Gen X themselves are trying to overcorrect the way they were raised. They were probably very disciplined and hated it and vowed to never do the same thing to their own kids. It feels like a lot of these parents are trying to find an easy way out of parenting so they handed their kids iPads to make them shut up, never implemented any rules or guidance because they didn't know how, and blamed their socially inept child's disrespectful behavior on teachers not understanding. And who does that leave to discipline Gen Alpha and Gen Z? Teachers. They're not going to hire you. They're not going to hire you because you can't listen to anybody. You can always just go work at McDonald's. No. You want to bet? McDonald's they doesn't do. just hire anybody. Yeah, they, they no. Do. They, <laughs> don't. they hire anyone. McDonald's has standards that you have to meet. If you can't even make it through sixth grade, they're not going to hire you at McDonald's. And unfortunately, when it comes to the constant talking back... I've had enough of it. This punishment stuff is going to stop. You're not going to tell me what I'm going to do and not do? I am now the alpha. Bro. That's not how this works. I am the teacher. The alpha takes priority over the teacher. The alpha takes priority over everything. Do you well, not know how that the works? The teacher is telling the alpha to sit in his seat right now. An apathy these educators are facing on a daily basis? Gen Z students are completely unhinged. I'm about to show you a clip from midway through a student's presentation. I can't make this up. Added a video to the slideshow. Click epic link here. Many have reached their breaking point. I'm so surprised. Well, actually, I'm not surprised by the amount of support that are in the comments for that teacher. For someone to be pushed to the point of yelling like that in a professional setting, like his entire livelihood, his money, his dignity was on the line and he threw it all out the window. That means something. Either that guy is not very mentally stable, which I don't know him, but from what I've seen, the fact that he's in that classroom tells me that he was extremely and utterly disrespected. However, teachers aren't just facing disrespect from their students, they're also facing rage. While most states don't track data related to assaults on teachers, since the return to in-person learning in 2021, there's been numerous reports of violence against educators in the American school system. And the perpetrators of these attacks? They're doting students. Yep, according to claims and risk management services firm Gallagher-Bassett, from September to May 2022, 
there's been a five-year high in assault-related workers' compensation claims from about 2,000 schools in different regions of the U.S. We are witnessing the highest levels of frequency, severity, and complexity for these kinds of assault claims when compared to the last four complete school calendar years. Greg McKenna, public sector practice leader at gallagher Bassett, told the Wall Street Journal in 2023. In fact, the circumstances have become so bad that new and old teachers alike are leaving their positions. Teachers of all ages are quitting their job because of the behavior of Gen Alpha students. You quit? Not to be disrespected by anybody. I don't know who you people think you are, but you don't treat anybody like this. And people are laughing. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I don't even care if I don't get paid today. Not funny. This is a stupid old white lady. That's all. Oh, God, ain't no way up in the park. Yeah, do whatever you want to do. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Whoa. Whoa. I'm walking. I'm walking right out the door. I won't ever be back. They're tired of dealing with the violence. They're tired of dealing with the apathy. They're tired of dealing with parents who are making the excuses and fighting them all the way through the process. And what appears to be a mass exodus of educators is currently underway. I quit teaching Gen Z, but apparently Gen Alpha is just as hard. I have had a student throw chairs at me and shoes because I asked them to get their math book out and turn to the page that we were working on but they didn't want to. 10 Lamar High School is investigating the disturbing video that shows a student punching a teacher in the head today. In this clip, a student gets in front of a teacher's face, demanding to get his phone. Seconds later, he punches the teacher in the face. 20 years ago, um, you wouldn't hear the same types of things that you hear in a classroom today from students. Um, I've had to deal with second graders throwing chairs, punching walls, walking out of my classroom. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm no longer a teacher. I'm no longer an educator. I feel like I'm a glorified babysitter. It's like a five alarm fire right now. Becky Pringle, president of the National Education Association, told CNN on the current teacher shortage affecting schools across the U.S. This is not new, but like everything else, the pandemic made it worse. And that brings us to the fourth and final subject of who is to blame. An issue that no teacher, curriculum, or parent can fully address, COVID-19. It was only four years ago that schools began shutting their doors in the face of the burgeoning pandemic. Shortly after that, remote learning took over. However, it's only through hindsight we can see the devastating consequences this decision had when it came to Gen Alpha's and Gen Z's formative education. Data from around the country is starting to show that middle and high school students are falling behind. This week, Fairfax County Public Schools in Virginia reported an 83% jump in middle and high schoolers earning Fs this year compared to last year. Sometimes it, it's really hard to just be motivated to like actually get on the Zooms and to do the work just because I feel like it doesn't even matter. It feels like we're not really learning. In person, you could talk to your teacher and it would be way more easier to learn better. National tests expose that during the pandemic, over two decades of progress in math and reading were completely erased in nine-year-old school children and other age groups have shown similar post-pandemic declines. And if those numbers don't start going back up, what is at risk for this generation? Everything. Unfortunately, the toll remote learning took on students persists to this day. And that means kids are stuck playing a never-ending game of catch-up when it comes to making up those lost years. Those kids are not where the other kids were a couple of years ago. The gaps are widening. Those kids who were behind are even more behind. Yep, it turns out a pandemic isn't something kids can simply bounce back from unaffected. For children, this pandemic is gonna have a very, very long tail. It's not a light switch the way it may be for you and me. Especially when it overlapped key developmental phases. The oldest Gen Alpha are, what, 13? So the oldest children who went through the pandemic in Gen Alpha were 10. A lot of them were younger 
Their whole lives were upended. Of course they're behind on reading. Of course they're behind in social emotional growth. Of course they are acting younger than they are. As for Gen Alpha and Gen Z screen time, according to research supported by the National Institutes of Health and published in the journal Pediatrics, that too never recovered from the pandemic and has instead remained high since restrictions were lifted. And when it comes to the effects of excessive screen time in children, listed by Mayo Clinic, including behavior problems, delays in language and social skills development, violence, and attention problems. It's not hard to connect this to the issues that are currently plaguing the student bodies of various schools today. In fact, in 2022, over 80% of U.S. public schools reported that the pandemic had negatively impacted student behavior and socio-emotional development. On top of this, Growing classroom sizes and a lack of support means these students are missing the extra attention they desperately need. The worst part as a teacher is seeing these kids suffer and not being able to give them what they need. We can only do so much. We have 30 kids in a class, all with different needs and diagnoses, and we, we can't keep up. It's completely unsustainable. Leaving members of the notoriously underpaid, understaffed, and undervalued profession to reconsider whether their calling is worth it. This pandemic has exasperated and exposed so many things that teachers are dealing with, the lack of resources, the lack of support, the lack of pay, the impossible expectations that we meet because we care so much about our students. And it's mentally and emotionally breaking us. But is the fate of today's students as dire as it seems? Sure, the mounting concern online and in the media isn't exactly reassuring. Are we looking at a generation that is never going to recover? Certainly, it's a, it's a generation of students that uh, have experienced something that none of us have experienced before. And these are future leaders, our future doctors, our future nurses, our future... Please. They could put this country into anarchy. I'm afraid of them. But then again, this isn't the first time younger generations have become the subject of controversy. Previous generations have also separately carried the stigmas associated with disrespect, violence, and aimlessness, with Gen X even earning the title of the slacker generation. As a Washington Post article from 2014 on the apparent apathy in millennials stated, the problem with any claim regarding the future attitudes and behaviors of today's youth is that they are difficult to predict. And so, the question isn't who will destroy the world first, fourth graders or global warming. But whether Gen Alpha and Gen Z's negative qualities are unique to their generation or simply a byproduct of youth. You know, the historic target for all that's wrong with the world. Children are now tyrants, not the servants of their households. They no longer rise when elders enter the room. They contradict their parents, chatter before company, gobble up dainties at the table, cross their legs and tyrannize their teachers. This is often misattributed to Socrates, by the way, but this is actually a summary of general complaints about the youth by the ancient Greeks, as written in a 1907 dissertation by a student, Kenneth John Freeman. Every generation thinks that the new generation is completely unhinged. And that means there's still time for Gen Alpha and Gen Z to prove older generations wrong, or at least find a way to make use of their unique skill sets. I'm a teacher and I see growth gaps everywhere. Some kids can't read, some kids can't write a sentence, however, I believe every single student will be successful, especially if they choose marketing in this generation. All because of this video. I shy 50% off Domino's Pizza because I'm new here and I don't want to get fired yet. So please don't let this video flop. All right, let's. Like, I know we teach our kids to write in like complete sentences and write without using like PLS for please. However, this commercial just proved all of us wrong. As for the gaps in their education, their violent outbursts, and their unrestricted screen time they have attributed to everything, from lax parenting to the school system and pandemic, that remains a cause for concern. However, when it comes to whether the young people of today are doomed, it's safe to say that's too early to call. The priorities of today's youth just aren't the same. Like people are like, yo, you're that kid from TikTok. I'm like, I'm like yes sir, I am. I'm like, let me cook, cuzzo. And while their polarizing interests attitudes, and behaviors may all just come down to a phase in adolescence. Apparently there is a generation alpha. Yep. You have to be like what? 10? Nine years old, 10 years old? 
at most. That doesn't change the fact that educators are currently shouldering this burden. All I know is that teachers are human beings, and a lot of times people forget that. While other factors continually make their jobs more difficult. Sure, it may be easier to put a kid in front of a screen, but is it really helping them in the long run? Are you saying schools were just graduating kids who didn't fundamentally know how to read? Yeah, it's happened all across the country. You know, I love teaching and I love watching the kids grow and learn, but if I can't do my job, then what am I doing? You can call it an old folks complaining about young folks thing. Why are you de demonizing millennial parents? Why are you demonizing Gen Alpha kids? Or you can step back and look at it from our perspective and say, gee, I wonder why there's so many people talking about the same thing. This is the story of the students of today, including the challenges they present in the classroom and potentially beyond.